My name is Dr. Michael Greger, uh, founder of the nonprofit website nutritionfacts.org. Every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world, so uh, busy folks out there don't have to. Um, and, uh, and I uh, compile all the most interesting, most groundbreaking, the most practical findings. Um, it's new videos and articles I upload every day. Um, to the website. Everything is free, no ads, no commercial sponsorship, not selling anything. In fact, all of my proceeds from my books, DVDs, speaking engagements, all goes to charity. I just do this as a public service. and actually all goes back to my grandma, who, uh, who when I was a little kid, was diagnosed with then-stage heart disease at age 65, um, uh, you know, confined to a wheelchair, crushing chest pain, already had uh, multiple bypasses and uh, sent home to die. And then she heard on 60 Minutes, Nathan Pritikin. She's one of uh, um, his first patients. They wheeled her in, and she walked out and uh, lived another 31 years on this planet with her six grandkids, including me. And that was the day when she came out that I knew I wanted to be a doctor. But then in medical school, they didn't teach. I mean, by then, Ornish had published in The Lancet Lifestyle Heart Trial, reversing our number one killer without drugs, without surgery. and if, if that didn't get out there, if the cure to our number one killer, was, then what else was there in the medical literature that I didn't learn about in medical school? That none of that no that there wasn't a financial motive, there wasn't a you know a corporate budget driving its promotion out there, and so I made it kind of my life's mission to go back into the literature and look at this incredible mountain of research. It's not like it isn't there. It's not like the studies haven't been done. Now, in the age of the Internet, now people can take their life and their health and their family self into their own hands and educate themselves. They don't need to rely on so-called professionals. The low-carb movement keeps coming back over and over again in different faces, and each of them swears, oh, no, I'm not like the last low carb. No, no, we, we, you know, we tweak it a little bit. No, no. We, uh, um, but, I mean, they're very similar manifestations, and of course they sell lots of books. Um, because, I mean, you know, any book that says bacon is good for you is going to sell a lot of books. But, you know, what troubles me is, you know, th this isn't an academic debate. This isn't an academic discussion. Who's right? Who's wrong? It's uh, people are going to listen to these and actually hurt themselves, hurt their families. People are going to die. What's their number one cause of death? Number two cause of death? Go down the list. These are largely diet-related diseases, and to tell people to eat these kind of diets that, 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 you know, it's not that it's not based on science. The science is the opposite. This is not the Dr. Greger diet versus the Dr. Atkins diet. It's the science. It's centuries of science versus the latest fad that someone wants to sell books over. And it's ironic to me that, you know, the, the foundation of these theories tend to be that, you know, carbs are bad because they increase insulin. And insulin, um, high, having high levels of insulin associated with cancer, associated with lots of bad things. But, to, to, I mean, the, there's a, per, meat is insulinogenic. There's a, there's a paper by, uh, you know, Holt and colleagues, 1997, uh, American Journal of Clinical Administration, called, in fact, you can look it up, it's probably free by now, Insulin Index of Foods. And it just and it says you eat this much of, and they you know, went through about 50 different foods, and Eating beef causes a greater spike in insulin than white potatoes and white pasta and 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 uh, you know and white rice. More insulin, and that if that's the villain, right? Then you'd stay away from the meat. Even using their own framework, you would eat the the opposite thing. And I mean the cause of prediabetes, the cause of type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. What causes insulin resistance? It's intramyocellular lipid. It's fat that's inside the muscle fibers that interferes with insulin signaling such that um, uh, your body has to keep pumping insulin to try to force it um, into your uh, muscles, which use up about 85% of, the, of the, your blood sugars. Your blood sugars rise because they can't enter into the cells. And, and not just any fat, but particularly saturated fat is toxic. So it actually is called lipotoxicity. And that's, that's the term that's used in the literature to describe the effect that saturated fats have on the insulin 
uh, on producing insulin resistance. And we can do this, it's not just epidemiological studies. The back, the studies back in 1927, they took these medical students, put them on a high-fat diet, and within days their insulin sensitivity dropped. Their, uh, they had twice the blood sugar spike to the same meal that people um, that, uh, were, that were on the, the kind of high carbohydrate. Twice the blood sugar response, just two days eating these fatty foods. And we now know, and now we can, we can infuse, we do these lipid infusions. You can actually infuse fat, and within hours we can see insulin resistance appear, blood sugar start to go up, your body has to churn out that extra insulin, and we have fancy drugs that can actually pull fat out of your system, and insulin uh, resistance drops, um, and it doesn't have to be in the vein. The fat can go in your mouth too, and we have the same thing, um, and, and the effect is almost instantaneous. Um, literally within days, or within hours, within days, uh, we, can, we can get this insulin resistance, and that is what leads to these diseases. Now it's a, diabetes is the seventh leading killer. It's an epidemic. It's now uh, becoming a pandemic around the world as developing countries are starting to take on the rich Western diet. And uh, I mean, it's just an absolute tragedy. And they're telling people to eat exactly what's causing the disease. In fact, that's why obesity is associated with diabetes, because you can get fat in your bloodstream, which gets in your muscles, two ways, either through your mouth or your fatty tissues. Actually, what's called a spillover effect. Actually, your adipocytes, the number of fat cells you have after about age 20 is about the same. The reason you're, that you're, you know, your butt thighs and stomach gets bigger is just your fat cells actually fill up with fat. They swell. You don't get more fat cells. They just get bigger. And when they stretch to a certain point, they start spilling fat over into your bloodstream, and that gets lodged in your muscles, and that can spill over, get lodged in your liver, and cause insulin resistance in your liver, make things worse, and then can actually lodge in the pancreas, in the insulin-producing cells of your pancreas, and then you can actually get that same lipotoxic, that fat toxicity, um, in your pancreas that reduces, uh, eventually, um, reduces the amount of insulin you can produce, and then you're in you know, florid uh, type 2 diabetes, and, which is the number one cause of uh, blindness, number one cause of, uh, of non-traumatic amputations, number one cause of kidney failure in this country. These are horrific complications. And what does modern medicine have to give them? Just trying to reduce the complication rate. I mean, just not treating the underlying cause, um, and we can cure this disease even years into the process, which, yeah, which is really exciting. It's not like, you know, the, I mean, we used to think, you know, we just kind of kill off these, these, uh, these, these, these betas of these insulin-producing pancreatic cells, but it's actually maybe we're just kind of suppressing them, it's just, and we can actually kind of wake them back up um, if we actually eat um, a, a cleaner diet, reduce that fat. Diabetes is a disease of fat toxicity in our organs, in our muscles, in our liver, in our pancreas. My mission in life is to help make people make evidence-based, science-based decisions as to what to feed themselves and their families to prevent, treat, even reverse chronic diseases that are laying waste to our society. I put all my work up free, nutritionfacts.org, and the science points to a diet centered around whole plant foods.